The Great Brinks Robbery was an armed robbery of the Brinks Building in the north end of Boston, Massachusetts, on January 17, 1950. The $2.775 million, $31.3 million today, theft consisted of cash and checks, money orders, and other securities. It was, at the time, the largest robbery in the history of the United States and has been called the crime of the century. So in this video, we are going to discuss the Brinks robbery. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. The robbery began with Budin dropping off her infant son, Chisa Budin, at a babysitter's before taking the wheel of the getaway vehicle, a U-Haul truck. She waited in a nearby parking lot as her heavily armed accomplices drove a red van to the Nanuit Mall, where a Brinks truck was making a pickup. At 3.55 p.m., Brinks guards Peter Page and Joseph Trombino emerged from the mall carrying bags of money. As they loaded the money into the truck, the robbers stormed out of their van and attacked. One fired two shotgun blasts into the truck's bulletproof windshield, while another opened fire with an M16 rifle. The Brinks truck was robbed in the early morning on July 11 near Los Angeles, said Dana Callahan, a spokeswoman for the security company. The merchandise had been loaded onto the truck late on July 10 following an exhibit hosted by the International Gem and Jewelry Show in San Mateo, south of San Francisco, said Brandy Swanson, the group's director. It was going to an event at the Pasadena Convention Center just northeast of Los Angeles, she said. Swanson said between 25 and 30 bags were taken, containing an unknown number of individual pieces. She said 18 victims were reporting more than $100 million in losses. Callahan said it was less than $10 million. In 1993, $7.4 million was stolen from the Brinks Armored Car Depot in Rochester, New York, the fifth largest robbery in U.S. history. Sam Miller was a member of the gang who carried out the robbery. He was caught, found guilty, and incarcerated before being set free by Bill Clinton's government as an essential part of the Northern Ireland peace process. Security guards told the police that they were surprised by assailants who had somehow evaded the sophisticated security system. They could not say how many robbers there were, it appears to be one of the biggest robberies in U.S. history. The FBI and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, LASD, are investigating a multi-million dollar jewelry heist that many only hear about in movies. Luxury items, including gems, jewelry, and more, were loaded onto a Brinks truck that was later broken into while it was pulled over at a rest stop. Arnold Duke, president of the International Gem and Jewelry Show, explained the show was being held at the San Mateo County Event Center. He confirmed Brinks contracted individually with each exhibitor to move their merchandise from the close of the San Mateo show to the opening of the event's Pasadena show. It happened just before 2 p.m. in the parking lot of a Napa Auto Parts on 44th Avenue and International Boulevard Oakland City Councilman Noel Gallo says the Brinks employee shot an alleged robber in self-defense. That alleged robber was killed. Police say the two other people are at a hospital. Authorities said a white car with several people inside was involved in the shooting. It was the sixth deadly shooting in Oakland this week and the 92nd homicide of the year. Armstrong asked the public to come forward with information to help solve the recent killings. When thieves broke into a Brinks tractor trailer and stole millions of dollars of jewelry in a late-night heist at an Interstate 5 truck stop last month, one of the drivers was asleep in the vehicle's sleeping berth, the company says. That revelation was disclosed in a lawsuit filed by Brinks against 13 jewelers whose wares the company was transporting from San Mateo to the LA area for the International Gem and Jewelry Show. Brinks alleged that the driver did not see or hear anything unusual during a 27-minute period in which the trailer's plastic seal was removed and its rear lock cut away. No merchandise, no business, no money coming in, we are in a terrible situation, wrote Liana and Paul Wong. The letter was provided to the Times by the proprietor's attorney, who said it had been sent to Brinks. We are losing our customers, goodwill and credibility to our creditors. These last few weeks have been the worst time of our lives. They and other jewelers filed a lawsuit Monday against Brinks and additional parties that questioned the company's efforts to protect their precious cargo. 
The jewelry companies, which are seeking at least $100 million in restitution and at least $100 million in damages, alleged that the tractor trailer was unarmored and parked in a poorly lit location at the Flying J. It was, the complaint said, positioned out of the immediate vicinity of security cameras, with its trailer's back door facing away from the building where one of the drivers was getting food. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe, and we will be back soon with another video.